In this tutorial, we're going to take a look how to use server actions in Next.js. In previous videos, we created our landing page. And in the last video, we created our sign in and sign up page. So in this video, let's jump in and take a look how to use server actions. This video is accompanied by our blog post. I decided to write the blog post first to make it easier showing you code snippets in the video. You will find the video in the description below. We're going to start by navigating to the section titled form submission and Next.js using server actions. Before we get too deep, remember, always use the documentations when you have questions. Here I'm in Next.js documentation and I'm going to just search server actions. And we're going to look at this page, server actions and mutations. Here you could learn more about how they work. Of course, I'm gonna walk you in this video how to implement them, but just remember documents exist for your benefit. So back in VS Code, and yes, this looks ridiculous, but I'm trying out having everything on the right side, making the code more visible on the left. We'll see how it goes. Let's jump into our source folder and we're going to go to our components and we're going to navigate to our sign up form. Here you could see our basic form that we created in the previous video. If we navigate to line 20, we're going to see that we have the form element. Let's do a quick detour and take a look at some of the form attributes that exist. Using the greatest website, MDN Web Docs, you could take a look at form and you could see some of the attributes that they have available. Notice that we have an action attribute. We're gonna talk about how we could use this specific to next to fire our server action. You could read more about other attributes. This is just great fun reading if you're bored. Back in our code, we're going to define an action and we're going to give it a name. It doesn't exist yet, but we're going to create it. We're going to call our action called register user action. Really straightforward. Now let's go ahead and create this action. We're going to go inside our data folder and we're going to create a new folder and we're going to call it actions. And inside our actions folder, we're going to create a new file and we're going to call it actions. These will be all the actions responsible for our authentication. Inside here, we're going to create a first server action. To specify a server action, we need to say use server. This will tell Next.js that we want this to be a server action. And we're going to create a function called register user action. We're going to talk about form data in just a moment, but first let's see if we submit a form, we could see this console log. So let's go ahead, take this newly created server action, go back to our sign up form and let's import it here at the top. So let's say after the links, we're going to say import our register user action from our auth action file that we just created. Now, the way form action works, whenever you click a button, and by default, this button has a type of submit, but you could be specific and type out button type submit, which doesn't hurt. Once we click this button, this should go ahead and fire our register user action. Let's take a look and see if that's actually true. So here, we don't have to worry about editing any data because we're not validating or checking anything. I'm gonna go ahead and click sign up and let's check our console. Hello from our register user action. So we know that our form and our server action is connected. So let's go to the next step and figure out how we could get our form data and pass it to our server action. If you take a look at our form, we have our fields and each field has a name attribute. We have one for the username, we have one for the email, and we have one for the password. My goodness, MDN docs is the best. So let's take a look at form data. If we scroll down, we could see that form data has the get method. That's exactly what we could use to get all of our data from our form. So let's see it in action. Back in our code, let's go to our auth actions. And here right afterwards, I'm just gonna paste in this following code. You could find it in the article that is going to be in the description below. But what we're doing here, we're defining a variable fields and it's gonna hold our user name, password, and email data. And we're using that form data.get method that we just saw in our MDN docs to get our input data. 
And what we're going to do, we're going to now submit our form and see if we could console log our fields. So now our application, let's do test user. Email is going to be test user at email.com. And let's say password is going to be test user. Let's click sign up. Nothing happens because we didn't write the logic, but at least we should be getting our data. So taking a look, notice, whoa, we are getting our data from our form. So now that we have our data, we could do something with it. So let's see what we could do. But you notice that this data is happening server side. Why if we wanted to create some validation and we wanted to pass this data to our client saying, hey, something is wrong. Before jumping into validation, let's take a look at how to use use form state hook to help us to get the data from our server action and see it on the front end. So let's jump into the code and see how we could accomplish this. Back in our code, let's navigate to our signup form. In the top here, right before our register action, let's import our use form state hook. Now, after all of our imports, let's define a variable to store our initial state. We're just gonna call it initial state and we're just gonna have data, which let's say is going to be, hello, you wonderful, I don't wanna say world, you know, I just wanna say you, people watching, wonderful people, hello, wonderful people. Now we're going to scroll down a little bit and we're going to say const inside brackets. We're going to say form state. And the second thing that we pass is going to be our form action. The first argument is going to be our register user action. And the second argument is going to be our initial state. So now we're going to go ahead and replace the action attribute here in our form with our form action. And we're going to add a console log here, console log form state. And we're going to say it's going to come from the client. Perfect. The reason why this is complaining is because we now have to reference our state inside our server actions. So navigating back to our auth actions right before form data, we're going to say previous state equals any for now. And here we're just going to go ahead and return our previous state and our fields. Now going back to our sign up form. And I just want to say, hello, you wonderful people. But when we submit our form, hello, wonderful people should be replaced by our form data. So let's take a look. So currently we see our hello, you wonderful people, which is our initial state. And now when we submit our form, I'm going to say test user again, test user at email.com. And I'm going to say test user again and click sign up. Boom. Notice here we are getting our data client side returned from our server action. So whenever you want to get a return state from our register user action, you need to use previous state, you need to return that data in a return statement, and in the signup form, you need to go ahead and use the use form state hook to help us accomplish that. Now that we know that we could return our data from our server action, in the next video, we're going to take a look how to use Zod for validation to validate our form before creating our user in our Strapi API. I'll see you in the next video.